<laughs> well, let's get started. I am really excited that you're on the podcast today, Ariana. You have been an inspiration in our massage industry for many years, and I'm so thankful that you got to join us today. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for all you do too, Julie. I keep track of you on Facebook and through your activities in Plano, and my son lives in Plano, so it's especially interesting for me that you're building more community there, and it's just wonderful. Yeah, I'm so happy that you and I have connected. Me too. Ariana, if you would help us understand a little bit more about you, tell us how you got into the massage business. Well, I was looking at my calendar and I realized that I started in 1983. And so this is my 40th year. So this is like a very significant year for me. I started in Austin, Texas. I was fortunate enough to go to school there. And I really love that kind of at the time, laid back lifestyle in Austin. And it was filled with people, uh, particularly in a group called the Austin Area Holistic Health Association. And I was one of the members of that group. And it introduced me, that group introduced me to a lot of people in the healing arts, chiropractors, massage therapists, rolfers. And it was just, uh, we would have potlucks every week and Bobby Bridger would come out and play music and we'd all sing and do sweat lodges and, you know, just typical Austin lifestyle, at least what we thought was typical. We didn't realize how different it was from everybody else's lifestyle. But we were really enjoying it at the time. And I met some wonderful massage therapists and some wonderful, uh, actually, allopathic healers as well as holistic healers. And so that really propelled me into moving in a direction of the combination of allopathic healing and holistic healing. And so I believe very much in the body's amazing ability to regenerate and and bring ourselves back into a state of homeostasis. And personally, I haven't found anything that does that better for me than massage therapy. And I was fortunate enough, my most recent continuing education class in which I was a participant was with Whitney Lowe in Costa Rica, and he taught orthopedic massage. And the way I was amazed at not only the content, but the way he teaches You know, he's got all these cool graphics and he really knows his material. And he's this beautiful combination of scientific and heart centered. And that's where I like to find myself in the massage community, too, you know, based in science and yet still maintaining that heart center and shining that light to all the people who come in touch with me. Literally (laughs) in touch. (laughs) You know, I I love the way you put that. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Bringing, bringing science and, and, you know, our natural instincts together is really important in the medical community in general, not mm-hmm. in massage, but, you know, for all of us. Yeah. So when I first started uh, teaching, actually, I studied Candace Purse work and she was with the National Institutes of Health. And she wrote this wonderful book called Molecules of Emotion. And so it's the use of, you know, stress reducing techniques to help facilitate good health. And uh, since she was with the National Institute of Health, she was based in science, and yet she was talking about this really uh, cutting edge focus on healthcare and healing and how really important stress management is in our lives and recognizing that stress can be a not only uncomfortable if your body's all bound up, but it can also be detrimental to the cortisol level in your body and you know, all of the scientific things that go along with that. So that's been a big focus of mine is trauma therapy, working with people who've experienced trauma in their lives and who hasn't, you know, and and it's really a beautiful thing that we can bring trauma therapy together with massage therapy. And it can really facilitate someone's release from the the bow, the bind, you know, the tie that binds is a good thing, but not in this case, you know, with help release that trauma and go into a natural state of being that's in harmony with the universe, so to speak. Yes. One of my, I say that and I kind of smiling inside because one of my favorite teachers is Pualani Gillespie in Hawaii. And of course she teaches Lomi Lomi. And I just love studying with her because she embraced that too. The whole idea of not only the harmony within the body, but the harmony with others around us. And for me, massage therapy has really brought me in touch with people who I do feel a kinship with and I feel harmonious with, like you. And it's so ha- I feel so happy to be here. And I feel like it's been the right career choice for me. 
You know, I've really met people who just inspired me so much. And then I've also met people who taught me lessons about the Buddhist teaching, not this, not this. And so I, you know, just welcomed it all. <laughs> Maybe not at the time, but, you know, later you just welcome it all and you go, oh, what lessons are there in this for me? And I have learned so many lessons in the massage community and continue to, which is one thing that keeps me interested and in, in, engaged after 40 years because there's always something some some new modality or some new you know uh, attitude toward massage therapy and new people come in and people come out and it's just I see all the fresh young faces when I go visit the water scene massage school in Austin and that's always so inspiring to me to see these bright and shining faces who are our future isn't it so cool to be around the inspirational young people that are just joining us in this in their career paths in this industry it's so it's so invigorating as a seasoned massage therapist you know i've i've not been in it for quite 40 years congratulations on your 40 Thank years you. that's very <laughs> exciting i think i'm hitting about 17 years this year and you wonderful know, it's really inspirational to be around people who are just so excited to start their business or start their career path in massage. Now, you've started an online or you have an online business, the Ariana Institute. Can you tell us yes. a little bit about your business? Yes, I formed that at my 20 year mark. And so after I've been a massage therapist for 20 years, I uh, looked around, 19, it was 1999, and I was working at Barton Creek Resort and Country Club, which is now the Omni, and a lady named Maria Solis worked with me, and she was a big inspiration to me. She taught facial massage class. She taught hot stone class. She would get all these hot stone warmers and put them in the back of her car and drive down to the valley, and she was bilingual, and so she would teach hot stone classes down in the valley, and she had a sweet little market for herself. So I really admired her teaching capabilities and her, you know, inspiration to put her daughter through cosmetology school. And she said, as soon as my daughter's through cosmetology school, I'm going to quit teaching. Sure enough, she did. <laughs> it was like, she, met her goal. she met her goal. Her daughter graduated from cosmetology school and has her own career. And so it's people like Maria who have inspired me throughout my career as a massage therapy instructor. And uh, the, the state of Texas in 1999, that was the point where they decided you had to take a 30-hour class in order to become a massage therapy instructor. Well, Maria and I looked at this and we went, oh, my God, we want to get in under the wire. <laughs> so we, yeah. don't have, we don't have to take that class, which is ironic because now I'm teaching that class. <laughs> yeah. So things come around, don't they? Yeah. And so Yes. And so I do have an online class, an online series of classes. Most of them are six hour classes and they range from things like prenatal massage to deep tissue to aromatherapy and Reiki and different modalities that are of interest to me. Trauma that I mentioned early trauma therapy. And then most recently, uh, my wonderful operations director, Stephanie Friedersdorf, and I have gotten together with Susan Salvo and updated our massage therapy instructor course manual. And Susan did this as part of the Alliance for Massage Therapy Education group, a mentoring group. And I was so grateful that AFMTE came along and offered me this opportunity to enhance my massage therapy instructor course. It was a 30-page course notebook. Now it's a 50-page course notebook. And it includes things like how to market your classes, how to set up your classes, how to comply with NCBTMB rules and regulations, how to apply, you know, comply with local state of Texas rules and regulations, and how to access rules and regs in other states throughout the United States. And also how to take care of yourself, you know, as, a, as an instructor and how to have that work-life balance so it's not skewed in one direction or another. And it's just so heartwarming to inspire someone who loves to be, a, you know, wants to be a massage therapy instructor and who wants to stay in the massage field, but may not want to continue working full-time 40-hour weeks as a hands-on massage therapist. And that's how I was feeling at that point in my life 20 years ago. I wanted a balance of the intellectual and the hands-on work. And for a while, it was really um, 
uh, challenging for me because I was working full-time as a massage therapist and teachings in the evenings and on the weekends. And so it was, uh, you know, when do I have time to do my laundry kind of lifestyle? And now it's turned out to be a very different experience since I'm not offering massage therapy per se anymore. I'm just offering my classes. And my most popular class is the MTI class because in Texas and not other states, but in Texas, it's a requirement that you take this 30-hour CE class. And I do offer 12 hours of continuing education for Texas and 30 hours of NCPT and B CE credits for my MTI course. So we've set the course up where both the Texas board and the and the national board, as well as boards throughout the United States, accept my course, our course, I should say, because Stephanie and Susan and that whole team, we've got a team of four people at the Ariana Institute. And so it's really wonderful for me to be a part of that community and not just the whole responsibility is on my shoulders. It's uh, spread out among several people who are very competent, each in their own field. They have a web designer who was originally in Austin and now lives in Rochester, Minnesota. <laughs> and so he stays with us, Patrick. And then we have a marketing director, where, uh, Wes, who's been with me longer than anybody. And so it's really nice that he continues to be my marketing director. So all the ads you see on Facebook are designed by Wes and, and his partner, Trace. And so that's really nice to have that type of support. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Stephanie is the operations director. And so she takes care of student registration. She interfaces with Teachable. She's a computer wizard. And so she's able to help whatever we, you know, whatever help we need in setting up the new courses and, and setting up the massage therapy instructor courses and going through our litany of courses, which are 33. And now we're revising all of them. We're going alphabetically. So now we're at deep tissue. So it's interesting. I was designing a course 20 years ago and now going back and looking at that course and seeing, oh, what's new? What can we change? How can we better help the students? You know, what kind of graphics can we include? And what, if I were taking, you know, I asked myself, if I were taking this course, what would I really like to gain from it? You know, what would my goal be in taking the courses? And I try to design them with that in mind, with goals, you know, that are achievable and measurable and result in uh, the ability to stay in a profession that I love, massage therapy, while not actually practicing full time, but now I'm working as a teacher in that profession. And so it's great. You know, you see, you're building on knowledge. You know, it's like there's the base core curriculum courses and then the CE courses and then developing the courses and now redesigning them and updating. So it's an interesting 40 year process. And I <laughs> loved every minute of it. <laughs> That's awesome. And, you know, Ariana, I don't know if you know this or not, but I took your online MTI class to be well, an instructor. Yes. And- it was a few years ago. It was prior to the pandemic. And I think I got my actual MTI in the mail over the pandemic while we were all closed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. When when the state of Texas helped us out by saying, oh, we'll help you. You don't need to take any CE courses. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm so glad you took it. I mean, yes. that's so, so heartwarming for me to talk to students who've taken the course and who now are blossoming in their own right. And that's just so wonderful. I mean, there's nothing that an instructor would love more than to see students thrive. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it was very easy to take your online course. And, you know, in general, I'm usually not a big fan of online courses for massage therapy because I think we're just Mm -hmm. important to have that hands on. But I You made it really easy and there were a lot of great points you made on adult learning and how to really become a successful instructor. So thank you for what you created. You're very welcome. Yes, my pleasure. And I'm so glad to get that feedback from you. That means the work for me. Yes. (laughs) And if there's somebody out there that's on the fence about becoming an MTI and, and maybe there's somebody who's a little shy or not sure if they want to do that. How would you respond to that feeling? Oh, there's uh, just like the general population. You know, there's a whole spectrum 
of instructors and people who desire to be instructors or maybe, as you say, might be on the fence about being an instructor. And I always encourage potential instructors to first research the market. You know, look at your return on, on the investment. Is, is the, this course going to be economically viable and create a sustainable income for me so I can continue doing what I'm doing? You know, if we don't have, create sustainable incomes for ourselves and just give ourselves away completely, or we burn ourselves out working, you know, 14 hour days in two, two different spas. <laughs> I know it's, like, yeah. Yeah. it's really, really wonderful to be able to uh, uh, offer both cognitive and hands on, you know, classes, show the techniques in, in videos that are optional for Texas students because technique. Unfortunately, in online classes in Texas, they don't allow techniques to be taught. And so the MTI course, as you mentioned, is one that lends itself very well to the online environment because it's primarily a cognitive class. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it teaches you about you know, how, to, how to focus on a student's needs, how to work with special needs students who might come to your classes, where you can teach. You know, you can be in an MTI like I am. I'm a private MTI. And I have my own school, the Ariana Institute for Wellness Education, and that's how I originally developed it. And then there are also opportunities to work in schools. I mean, that's the first logical place a person would look to work as a massage therapy instructor. And many people do begin in schools, and then they have their own practices and their own teaching programs that they've developed themselves. And I look to my mentors like Susan Salvo and, and Whitney Lowe and other people in the community who have over the years developed courses that are really beneficial to students and not um, just satisfying CE requirements, although that's important to, to satisfy those, those CE requirements. And then you can also teach for companies like LMG Success Group, and so that's another way to teach. An LMT success group, for example, is teaching classes in Costa Rica. They teach classes in, you know, downtown Houston. <laughs> so it's, that's quite a spectrum. And they yeah. have, you know, prof professors or instructors who travel around with the MTI groups. So there's, there's that. There's the MTI groups. I mean, the LMT groups, that type of success group the LMT success groups, and then the independent MTIs like I am, and then the MTIs who work for schools. And so that's uh, really wonderful to see. Community colleges are offering massage classes, and so they need instructors. And if you're creative, you can really think of courses to offer, ways to market the courses, how to reach the new generation of, of people coming in, and how to keep things fresh. And up to date. And so that's that keeps me stimulated and excited about being an instructor myself and instructing instructors. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be training instructors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like get myself out of a job. <laughs> I'm gonna be yeah. training all these people and they're gonna take over. And that's fine with me because there's plenty of room, isn't there? You know, there are what, 32,000 massage therapists in Texas. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. not crazy, but it's it's a wonderful, a big market. And yeah. so when you look at the return on investment, you look at, say, 32,000, that's a number I just pulled out of the air, but it's, you have that many people and then you look at it nationwide, that's a big market for people who want to learn and who need CE credits and who want to advance in their careers. And so that's one, one little niche that I'm able to be of service to the world in a kind and loving way. And so that really satisfies some both emotional and, and psychological needs that I have. You know, to have a career path that is in alignment with my life's moral compass and uh, philosophy, basic philosophy. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Ariana, can you share with us what motivates you? What's your, what's your why? Oh, that's a very good question. Well, uh, of course, I don't want to be a financial burden on my family. And, and so as I grow older, that has been a big motivator for me to have a career that sustains me economically. So I can be an independent woman and independent businesswoman, as well as someone in a career field that I have grown up in and love and see people who have also grown up with me in this field. And it's that that motivates me to feel like I'm in a community of kindred spirits. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that just really is so satisfying to me to go to like AMTA conferences, ABMP activities, NCBTMB activities, whether it's online or via Zoom or via Facebook or whatever. It's so nice to be in a community of kindred spirits that have uh, similar goals in mind, which is to you know promote healing promote well-being, help people return to a state of balance when, when they stepped off that precipice where the balance may not be as uh, comfortable as it usually is. Yeah. So that's, yeah. So great. And, and I also love medical massage, and that's something that's brought me into a, a whole different realm of instructing is the world of medical massage. And I studied with some really wonderful people in oncology massage, like Tracy Walton and uh, Sepsidi Sumler at Indy Anderson. And so that is a career field that opened up for me. By grace, I had a friend who was dying of pancreatic cancer. He was my best friend's husband. And so she asked me to come over and be a part of his dying community process. And so I did. I said, of course, Anya, I'll be there in a heartbeat. And I did. And I stayed during the whole process. And then after that experience, I I called several people who were already involved in oncology massage. Jerry Ruan is one of them who is still in Austin. And uh, I started talking to her about studying more in depth about um, oncology massage. You know, all the aspects, the counter, the indications, the contraindications, the drug interactions, you know, the psychological aspect of working with someone who's going through something like cancer and what to do and what not to do and I felt so much more capable after studying with the oncology massage leaders in, in the community. And I still haven't designed my oncology massage class, but I do have several medical massage classes. You know, there's just a point there where I feel like I don't know enough yet. <laughs> so there's still things on the horizon. There are challenges for me. Yes. And someday I'd like to have an oncology massage class, but I just have, I'm working on revamping my current classes, and then I'll start developing new classes at some point in my career field. That's Seems like amazing. I'm going to go on forever, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, I did. I want to point out something to our listeners in that even as a seasoned massage therapist with 40 years under your belt, having this really important business and successful business that you help others become MTIs, Even with all of your history and all of your knowledge, I love the fact that you're like, I still don't know everything and there's a lot of things I need to know. And I I want to reiterate that because one of the things, one of my reasons why is because I feel like there's never enough to know in our business. There's so much to learn and I love to learn. I want to be a lifetime learner. And I just want to say, if you're if you're new to the industry, if you're in the middle of your career, if you're the end of your career, and you feel like you still have so much to learn, hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, it's a fascinating field, isn't it? And yeah. I, I love that idea of hanging in there. And if you feel like you're in a routine, for example and you want something more for yourself, you can always deepen the experience by seeking mentors and teachers who have come before you who know more than you do. And it's interesting that you should say that about the the young people coming into these school, you know, the massage schools. When I, I'm currently living in Houston, but when I lived in Austin, I had a close association with David Lauderstein and the Lauderstein Conway School. And so every once in a while, David would give me a call and say, Hey, we're inviting a few people to come out and talk about what it's like to be a massage massage professional. And we appreciate it if you come talk to our students. And so I would go talk to their students and it was so much fun. I just loved it. It was one of the highlights of my awesome time. And it was just really great. And one of David's students, a wonderful German girl, whose name was Grit, G-R-I-T, when she was in massage school, taking her core curriculum classes at the Lauderstein Conway School, she decided that she wanted to take continuing education classes concurrently with her core curriculum classes. Even though she didn't need the CE credits, she wanted the knowledge. And so here she was taking all the core curriculum classes, doing her training, doing her hands-on work. And then in addition to that, taking the CE classes and getting a really, really good foundation 
for a career field in which she's prospered and grown and you know is very happy. So that that really is unusual for someone who's in the core curriculum classes to take you know all the CE classes that I offer. And it was just like so great to see someone who's so enthusiastic. <laughs> awesome, I love yeah. it. You know, a couple of big ideas that we've been capturing in this podcast over the course of over a year now I've been doing this but one of the main main points that we like to talk about is to to hold on to a mentor find a mentor that you can relate to that you look up to that you respect their knowledge mm-hmm. and their guidance because I yeah. think You know, and I've had a few people reach out to me, students reach out to me to become their mentor. And I'm very grateful and humbled by that Mm -hmm. ask. And I do what I can to share my advice. And, you know, we have so many awesome people in our profession that are willing to help us. And I think that's unique to massage, to be frank. (laughs) Yeah, it is. You know, and it's Mm -hmm. special. It's really special. So I want to reiterate that point. The second thing that we've kind of touched on a little bit is finding your niche. Yes. Finding finding your path and whether it's medical massage, oncology massage, whether it's I do metacupping, there's a lot of people that have their own path, whatever that may be, you know, try dabble your Dabble yourself in some of these CE courses and maybe see if you can find your passion, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be, your options Mm -hmm. are endless. They are. And it can be a springboard to a different facet of your current profession, which is something that I really like. And circling back to your statement about mentors, I've been, I really agree with that wholeheartedly. And I have been so fortunate to find wonderful mentors with AFMTE. And then I was with, I found mentoring through a company called Micro Mentor. And they paired me with a wonderful mentor who was a business manager in California. And so for um, many, many months, he and I would talk via, well, at the time we just talk on the phone. And this was before Zoom. <laughs> Free Zoom. <Yeah. laughs> Thank God we had computers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he and I would talk and he would talk to me about, you know, developing a business plan, looking at the return on investment, th- you know, thinking about how much you are expending and how much you're making and how much you need to continue to be sustainable. And so to look at it from that logical, logical linear business perspective, too, because it is a business as well as a heart centered profession. And mm-hmm. so that, has, that was very helpful to me. And then since I was in Austin, associated with the University of Texas, my alma mater, and I was fortunate enough to uh, pair myself with a, a group of students from the McComb School of Business, which is their graduate school of business. And every year they would take on um, a, a private business in Austin to mentor. And so I worked with them and there were five students in that graduate program and they helped me redesign my website. You know, they helped me chunk information. It was the first time I heard about chunking information. I just had a long alphabetical list of my classes and they said, no, no, you need to chunk it in categories, you know, like medical massage and et cetera. And so I, I did that. I developed different categories for my courses. So each category has like four courses underneath it. And coming in contact with people who you wouldn't imagine would be helpful to a massage therapist works extremely helpful. And then, of course, I had to learn to use a computer more thoroughly than I did before to do the videos, you know, or to get someone to help me with the videos, to do the online classes and upload them to our online learning platform, which is Teachable. And again, Stephanie's been really helpful with that. And now we're looking at chat GPT and AI. And Stephanie knows a lot more about that than I do. So I bow to her. And it's just really wonderful to see that when I started back in 1983, we had just had computers for like 10 years. We was through marketing with little flyers on the billboard at Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it was yeah. like... Ah, oh, this whole world opened up when we had the electronic generation really came on board. And I no longer have to ask people, do you have an email address? You know, can, can you register for my online courses? Because it's just a, a, a normal course 
in due course, everybody has an email address now. If yep. you're not on your iPhone, on your computer. Yep. And so the merging of the electronic culture and the massage therapy community has been really amazing to me. And it continues to just amaze me when I go to classes and see all these cool graphics and courses and three-dimensional models and things that we never dreamed of in the 80s when I was a little at B in Austin, eating granola and hanging out at Whole Foods. <laughs> in fact, Whole Foods has been very instrumental in my growth, in my personal growth, because I actually worked at Whole Foods when I was in I was a senior at the University of Texas, and I say to myself and many other people, that's where my true education began, because I began learning about healthy lifestyles, healthy eating, you know, the balance of psychology and you know, cognitive thinking. And my minor at the university was psychology, and it's always been an interest to me. And so I'm really happy to be actually able to use my university education. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could have gone into my field, of course, without a university education, but I'm happy I had that. And I also have a previous career working as a legal assistant, and that helped me learn to type really, really fast. Yeah. And so that's really been helpful, you know, to have those skills that I thought, oh, God, am I going to be a secretary the rest of my life? And I didn't know if I would or not, it could have happened. And I hope I would be happy in that field. But the knowledge that I gained, little did I know at that time when I was taking a keyboarding class, that I would actually put that information to good use and, and help share the information about my classes. And also, I also help other people with their classes through the groups that I have on Facebook. And so, you know, if I have a, a group on Facebook for continuing education providers, for example, that's a central place where people can go and other educational providers can market their classes too, which we really need. You know, we really need that to have a continuing education community come together and market together as a group. And we get, oh, look what Eric's doing. Look what Walt Fritz is doing. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> awesome. Look what well, you're doing. And Plano. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yes, Thank you've you. opened a studio, haven't you? A store? Yes. So I have a retail store and training center in Plano, mm -hmm. Parker and Central. And that's, we just provide continuing education classes mm -hmm. and, and retail products that you need if you need a table or sheets or a holster or lotion, whatever you need for your massage practice or you know, your work as a massage therapist, you should come in and check us out. It's a beautiful store. I'm very proud okay. of it. <laughs> there you are. I remember in Austin, there was a store that was similar called the Morning Star Trading Company owned by Melissa Gonzalez. And it was a focal point for the community where people would come together in her store. You know, you, you go to the store, you buy supplies. She also carried earrings, which I loved. And you, know, you go to the store, you buy your supplies, you treat yourself to a little pair of earrings, your reward. And it was just like so cool to be as it was all converted house and it smelled like massage lotion and aromatherapy. And, and it was for the community to come together. And since you're offering CE classes there too, it's definitely a magnet for people to come together face to face where so many of us are coming together, especially during the COVID pandemic, are coming together via the miracles of the electronic culture. And it's so nice to have a physical store. And I'm looking forward to visiting you in your store. My son lives in Plano. And so I really, and he lives ironically near Parker and Central. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. <laughs> that is like meant to be destiny. Yeah. Yes. And though, even though we're five hours from each other in Plano and, and Houston, it's still we're in the same state. And yeah, yeah, it's really wonderful what you're doing. So thanks oh. for bringing the community together in a meaningful way. That's what we're here to do. I mean, I'm taking mm -hmm. lead, you know, I mean, I, I'm just trying to pick up the ball and continue on the path of what you and other people in our field have, you know, laid out for us to, to be successful with. Yes, at the beginning, it involves a lot of long hours, doesn't it? Because you're a practicing massage therapist, as well as having your CE classes and your store. So you're ordering supplies, you're looking at the balance sheet, you're having this physical space, and the responsibilities of being consistent. 
you know, and offering a space and being open when you say you're going to be open. And it's really amazing. And I'm so happy for you that you're doing this and happy that for the massage community that you're doing this too. Well, I, you know, it's been really fun to see um, AMTA come into Dallas and meet at my store and then having our networking groups. And, you know, we kind of want it to feel like a coffee shop, you know, mentality where you can network with each other and learn different things. And mm -hmm. I, th I think we're working to get there. And I think every time we have a meeting, it feels more and more like that. Oh, that's so wonderful. AMTA has such a, a dear place in my heart. My first CE class was taught at an AMTA group meeting at the Lauderstein Conway School in Austin. They wanted me to teach a marketing class and they liked that class. And then they asked me to teach a geriatric class. And, and it was like, oh, it was so scary for me. It's like, oh, I hope no one asked me any hard questions. <laughs> I, you know, I hope I can answer the questions that they asked me. And yeah. sure enough, it was a wonderful, supportive community. And you know, we've lifelong friends like Pauline Ott with AMTA. You know, it's just like so wonderful to get to know these people and to see them through their career too. You know, Pauline's in a little Texas town not far from Houston and she studied oncology massage with me and it's just so and we originally connected through AMTA and many of my closest connections in the massage community are through the AMTA group since yeah and so it's like I'm really happy that that organization has continued to thrive and offer not only local chapters but also national conferences. Yeah. I went to the national conference in Portland and I got to meet some people who I had like girl fans for so long, like Ruth Warner. <laughs> that was, I could hardly talk. She blew me her table and I was like speechless. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's so funny. And to learn from them. I mean, she's met Ruth Warner is it, other people for people who don't know her, is the leading pathology teacher and written wonderful book on pathology and she's very scientific minded and very heart centered. And so when I saw Ruth and her children dancing on the dance floor at the AMTA convention in Portland, I just thought this is just such a cool community where you can relate, you know, interact with people and relate to people who you feel a strong connection with and deeply admire and respect. And so it's just AMTA has been great and I'm glad they're continuing on their way, you know, to continuing to support the massage community and to come to you, to your facility in Plano too. What is the name of your school? Of your, your the, way, the name of my store is Handcrafted Therapy. Handcrafted Therapy. I that love that. Yep. Well, a lot of thought went into that name, didn't it? It really <laughs> did. You know, it's it's kind of interesting to be on this path. And and you know, I had a dream about the name. It came to me in my sleep and you know, I woke up going, that's the name of my business. And, you mm -hmm. know, it was a purposeful name. It really was. So thank you for pointing that out. Yes. Yes. That, oh, it came to you in a dream. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and you manifested your dream on the earthly plane. <laughs> I thrived. That is right. I brought yeah. them both together. They're just... <laughs> <laughs> As we kind of wrap up the interview, I wanted to see if anything that you wanted to share with our listeners that is just a good piece of advice, something that you maybe would have done differently if you could go back, or something that, you know, maybe you've done for yourself that you would encourage us to do as as your followers. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, my my background is in fine arts, and that was my major at the university. And I took a little art class before I even went to UT at, in Corpus Christi. And I studied with a wonderful gentleman named Joseph Kane. And I studied drawing and painting and spent a, a summer by the sea. And it was a very important time for me because I'd recently been divorced and had, had a serious illness. And so I was recovering and regrouping and deciding which way I wanted my life to go. So I went to Corpus, took this class with Joseph Kane and, and regrouped. And it was so uh, pivotal for me. And one thing that Joseph Kane would say at the end of the class is keep the light shining. And I've never forgotten that. And if I had one thing you know, to say to someone, keep that light shining and just believe in yourself and follow your heart. 
it's just so important to be in alignment with your own uh, vision of how life should be lived. And I feel that the framework of the Lusat community is a very viable way to do that. You know, to maintain who you are, your uniqueness as an individual, and look at that uniqueness. And as you mentioned earlier, the different aspects of massage can appeal to people at different stages in their career. You know, you may discover, oh, I love prenatal. I want to be a doula. You know, or you may discover, gee, this deep tissue is really great. I want to go to rolfing school and be a rolfer. And it was like, it's so, so many opportunities for growth in the field and beyond the field too. My husband is a, a certified advanced author and he studied directly with Dr. Ida Rolf. And so even in my personal relationship with my husband, being a massage therapist has been a great benefit to me because we speak the same, my husband and I speak the same language. You know, we know our muscles, we know the benefits, the importance of the posture and, and all of the psychological benefits that Rolfing and massage therapy can bring. And so I really love and admire the Rolfing community and look at that as a next step for many people who want to explore more in-depth information about um, massage and the way the body works and the way the mind works. And then I've also very much been impressed by the work of uh, Peter A. Levine, who teaches trauma therapy, and he has a somatic experiencing group of classes that he teaches. And I've gone to some lectures that Peter Levine offered about that somatic experiencing. And ironically, that's where I met my husband when I was 65. Wow, <laughs> it was so that's funny. awesome. I went, I went to a workshop and never thought I'd fall in love. You know, that wasn't my intent and it wasn't my goal or anything. It was just like, I was a happy single person in Austin, but there was Michael sitting right next to me with his friend, Richie, and he, we got introduced and it was like, you just never know what's going to happen when you go to a massage event. <laughs> you might fall in love and find white mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that story. What a sweet love story you have. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, well, life is about serendipity, isn't it? It you know, totally you know. is. Absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, I want to circle back because you said, keep your light shining. And I yeah. really like what you said about that. And that's kind of why I ask you what your why is. Mind our listeners to know your why, keep that light shining bright, know why you're doing this. Um, because I think if it comes from a place of passion and love and caring and deep in your heart that you know you're doing the right thing. Exactly. Yeah. As, you, as you're saying that, I'm thinking of my one of my favorite teachers, Fulani Gillespie, and um, both my husband and I took her Lomi Lomi class in Hawaii, in her Manadi Beach Holly, and uh, we studied with a, a Hawaiian spiritual teacher named Kulu Kiala Ching. He was also one of the instructors, and Fulani had cancer at the time, and she would leave our class and go get chemotherapy and then come back to class and teach. And what a shining example of keeping your light shining through the darkest of times. And here she was going through this very serious illness, which eventually she passed away from. I was part of her last class that she taught. And so she was a shining example to me of keeping the light shining and, and embracing that true aloha spirit of oneness and supporting each other to be our best selves. Yes. So you're right. Keeping that light shining is an right. important one. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Ariana. I know... Um, your time is valuable, and I'm so thankful that you shared with us some of your wisdom of 40 years of massage therapy. Well, thank you very much, Miss Julie. It's a pleasure knowing you, and it's an honor being interviewed you on, by you on your podcast. And I wish you the very best in your career and in your personal life, too. Thank you, dear. I'm so yeah. thankful to have you in my circle. Oh, thank you. It's my blessing.